Just east of Columbus, in Zanesville, Ohio, on the west bank of the Muskingum River lies the Putnam Historic District, whose people maintained a zealous longing for the revocation of slavery. The enduring efforts of their ancestors left a perpetual impact, innate in the buildings that still stand. Putnam, originally called Springfield, was settled by New Englanders in 1801. The settlers across the river in Zanesville came from Virginia and were generally pro-slavery. They recognized the religious zeal and strict morality of those that came to Putnam. Zanesville residents quickly came to refer to the people in Putnam as saints because of their religious fervor, and thus the town was nicknamed Saints Rest. Here in Woodlawn Cemetery, the saints, A.A. A. Guthrie, George Guthrie, Dr. Increase Matthews, General Rufus Putnam, Levi Whipple, and Major Horace Nye, among other abolitionists, are left to their eternal rest. Rufus Putnam, who, along with nephews Levi Whipple and Dr. Increase Matthews, developed Putnam, and Zanesville founder John McIntyre, found themselves on opposite sides of questions concerning the rights of blacks. McIntyre voted against black rights six times, in favor once, and was absent for one vote at the Ohio Constitutional Convention of 1802. Putnam, on the other hand, voted in favor all eight times. Putnam favored the exclusion of slavery or involuntary servitude, the rights of blacks to testify in court, hold public office, and of black males to vote. The most fearless Underground Railroad Station agent and conductor, A. A. Guthrie, is among the most prominent and distinguished of the Putnam abolitionists. Guthrie had been an accomplice in the escape of 16 freedom seekers in June of 1842. Mr. Guthrie would supply them with shoes or clothing, whatever they needed, and then the fugitives were directed to the next stop. Guthrie's home was referred to as the center of hospitality and of intellectual life. Guthrie helped plan the 1835 Ohio Abolitionist Society State Convention. When abolitionist speaker Theodore Weld came to speak at the Putnam Stone Academy, a group of rioters came over from Zanesville, disturbed the peace, broke up the meeting, insulted the women in attendance, and damaged the building whilst doing so. The mob was infuriated by the presence of Weld, who was also a noted Underground Railroad activist. In a letter to Lewis Tappan, he later recounted his experience. Mob came, broke the windows and doors, tore off the gate, attacked me when I came out with stones and clubs. This continued until the trustees of the room shut it up. Then we adjourned to a private room. In short, every kind of outrage was committed upon the abolitionist and colored people. Theodore Weld, 1835. The mob didn't stop there. They threatened to burn the homes of Major Nye, Mr. Howells, and Mr. A. a. Guthrie. During the convention, bands of roughmen, keelboatmen, butchers, miners, street Arabs came over and paraded in front of the academy and attempted to enter the house with the avowed design to kidnap Mr. Weld and tar and feather and dunk him in the river. But the old pioneer soldiers and citizens met them at the door and drove them out of the gate. Major Horace Nye, an old soldier of the War of 1812, raised during the Indian raids, bravely stood guard with his hickory shalala, and none dared to pass him. The Stone Academy was often at the center of abolitionist activities. It is there that they gathered regularly to pray for the end of slavery. They also organized a Bible class and Sunday school for African Americans at the Stone Academy. These events led to the founding of the Putnam Presbyterian Church in 1835. The Guthries and most of the Putnam abolitionists were also members of the Presbyterian Church, which condemned slavery as inconsistent with the law of God and totally irreconcilable with the gospel of Christ. 
William Beecher, whose sister was Mrs. Harriet Beecher Stowe, author of Uncle Tom's Cabin, served as the first pastor of the Putnam Presbyterian Church. Prominent anti-slavery speakers continued to appear, including former slave Frederick Douglass, who spoke at the Putnam Presbyterian Church in the autumn of 1852. The congregation was so eager for the overturning of slavery that starting in 1833 at the Stone Academy, they held weekly prayer in behalf of the cause. Putnam abolitionist H.C. Howells conveyed his message to the people of Muskingum County, declaring slavery as a sin and all those who were for slavery would burn in the fiery pits of hell. The men of Zanesville were outraged. A mob lo went looking for H.C. Howells with the intent of applying tar and feathers. Yet again, the old pioneers of Putnam protected Howells from the pack of Zanesville men. The angry men did not back down. When they could not find Howells, they found and slaughtered the family dog and hung him from a tree as a message the Putnam abolitionist. Tensions continued to escalate as Zanesville mobs continued to cause destruction in Putnam. They succeeded in burning the barns of Levi Whipple and Adam Francis in 1839 during the State Abolitionist Society Convention. Despite tensions, in 1872, after the Civil War and the complete abolishment of slavery, Putnam was annexed into Zanesville. Though the two rival towns are now one, the legacy of the Putnam Saints still remains in the Stone Academy and the Putnam Presbyterian Church, whose congregation is still active today, along with the message of freedom and equality. The Putnam Saints and their legacy resides in Woodlawn Cemetery and throughout the country as they prevailed in helping the emancipation of slavery. The spirits of those saints also remain in the Putnam Presbyterian Church in the stained glass windows donated by their descendants. Major Horace Nye, A.A. A. Guthrie, Matthew Gillespie, and Levi Whipple were among the bravest and most fearless conductors. All honor to them and their like, and may the written testimony to their memory never be effaced.